So I arrived in Manila yesterday, and this is day one, and first impressions are that it's very much like Vietnam. So it's quite similar to Vietnam so far. I mean, that's not to say it's identical. There's definitely differences which I'll come on to, but it's very hot. This is the midday sun. It's beating right down, but it's, um, it's nice. I think first impressions are interesting because when you stay in a place for weeks and months, you very quickly forget what your first impressions of that place were. Like, it's, it's energetic, there's a lot of traffic. It took me about an hour to drive 10 kilometers from the airport, which was not much fun, because you're just kind of sat there. I could have definitely walked it. I could have probably walked, certainly the last few kilometers, I could have walked faster than, than, than we were driving because we were so stationary for such a long time. The traffic really is terrible, but we've got loads of these um, things here. They're like buses and you hop on and for about nine, I think it's nine pesos, someone told me, which is so little money, it's unreal. I don't even know what that is, but it's like maybe 10 cents or something. Then they go in these loops around the city and they, they drive around. I flew into Manila Airport four days ago. Looking out of the plane windows, you can see a lot of, um, well, should we say living accommodation or kind of houses or uh, shacks in a very, very small area. And since I saw all this, I actually read online that Manila is the most densely populated city in, I think it was the world. So I can tell you from experience that what you see flying in out of the window would kind of confirm that. There's a lot of people in a very, very small area. So my taxi driver who picked me up from the airport, which by the way was a Grab. Grab is like Uber for Asia and it was very easy to do. And he only had a little car, but I hopped in the back, just about squeezed my case in the back, and then hopped in. And he was just singing the whole way back. What was funny was that he wasn't singing what was on the radio. He was like singing some Eric Clapton whilst Backstreet Boys was on the radio. And then like Westlife would come on and he'd start singing Talking to the Moon. But he, you know, he was really going for it and lovely guy, always smiling, only looked about 15. He might have been like 20 or something, but he looked really young, very slim guy. And yeah, he was, he was a lovely guy. I've talked to a lot of police officers and security people and yeah, they're carrying a huge massive shotgun, but these guys were happy to have their picture taken. So here we are, just got to my hotel room in Manila, just on the east side. Um, very, very small, pretty basic. Um, hard to get it all in one shot really, but you get the idea. I paid 11,000 pesos, I think they're pesos, yeah. Which is about 160 pounds or 210 dollars for seven nights, so pretty cheap. And to be honest, it's got everything I need. It's got a desk, um, somewhere to hang some clothes. I'll put my case down here. So yeah, it's all good. Now Manila, the city itself, is very busy, as you'd imagine, with a, the capital of a, of a country with 100 million people. It's kind of chaotic. There's lots going on and there's a lot of traffic on the road. The public transport system isn't very efficient, if there even is one. There's some trains running around, there's some buses, but there's not really any solid, kind of well-equipped transport system like an underground or a metro or a subway or kind of public buses which have a timetable and things like that. So everything's a bit crazy, but you know, you kind of just learn to go with it. You, you expect a two kilometer drive to take you 20 minutes when you could probably walk it in half an hour. And that's just kind of, that just kind of seems to go with the culture here. In Thailand and Vietnam, you see a lot of mopeds. You almost see more mopeds than cars. In fact, yeah, you probably do. You probably do see more mopeds here. There's definitely more cars than mopeds. So mopeds and motorbikes are kind of the exception. You wouldn't see many cyclists, if any, 
Um, you, you can rent a bike and ride around the park. The BAM bikes, by the way, shout out to BAM bikes, they, they're great. And you can rent a bamboo bike for like 100 pesos for an hour, which is a bargain. And you can just ride around the park and, and, and see some areas there, which is well worth doing. But you wouldn't want to be riding a bike on the main streets because your chances of getting hit or crushed by a car are, are, are pretty high. Every sunset in the Philippines seems to be equally as stunning as the one the night before. So sometimes, you know, in some countries you have a good sunset and then like an average sunset. Well, I mean, again, it's early days, these are first impressions, but every sunset here seems to be really incredible and I've watched it from a few different areas of Manila so far. I should probably explain that here in Manila, it's it, it kind of it's misleading to refer to Manila as the city. What Manila really is, in my experience and the way I understand it, is it's a, it's an urban metropolis, which is kind of an amalgamation of several different cities that are, have all kind of joined together. A bit, I guess, you could argue like LA is a metropolis, just a sprawling urban conurbation almost of lots of different areas. Well, Manila is definitely the same. You've got the, the main kind of downtown central business district area is Makati and that's where I was staying in this uh, hop in. There's also Pasi slightly further towards the, the sea, the ocean. You've got uh, Intramuros which is kind of the old part of the town right where the river uh, kind of flows out to sea. And then you've got this new area as well over to the east, which is BGC, Bonifacio Global City. And I went there today, amazing, huge war memorial, which is stunningly impressive. I couldn't go in because I got there just after closing time, but that is something worth seeing. Just north of that, you've got this nice park area where there's coffee, bubble tea, lots of shops, a really, really smart area. And I tell you what, there are different sides, different lives being lived in Manila, I can tell you that for sure. There are the poor parts, there are the wealthy parts, there are the old parts, the new parts, the smart parts, the rough parts, the clean parts, the dirty parts, like you can see a rat, as I did on the walk home this evening, jump well, I didn't see it jump out, but I saw it jump in and I just saw its tail and the image now in my head makes me feel a little bit sick. But there's so many different areas and moods and feelings within this city. So if you want a nice park, go to BGC, Bonifacio Global City on the east. It's gorgeous. It's so stunning and you feel like you're walking through, I don't know, Toronto or Vancouver or like a really nice part of... Uh, I don't know, somewhere like Portland, I've never been to Portland, but really nice, smart, plush blocks, not much traffic, it's quiet, you can actually drive places at a relatively normal speed, and that was beautiful. I then walked all the way back to uh, the top of Makati, which was always interesting to see what you find along the way. The air in Manila, from what I can see so far on day two, is very similar to that in <coughs> Phuket, Thailand. It's just so, in fact, Chiang Mai is even worse, but Southeast Asia, it has to be said. China included, of course, is not one for nice, clean air. So as you're walking along, you get a lot of diesel trucks and there's no kind of requirements for them to be clean about their emissions. So. They pump out whatever they want. There's no MOT, there's no like annual license check for what they 
pump out of their exhaust. There's no catalytic converters requirements. So, yeah, it's quite choking with all this traffic in a small place, especially when you've got certain geographies where you've got like valleys forming and things. It can be quite horrible. So quite often I wear a mask. Obviously, I'm not today, but you kind of get used to just walking out and just smelling diesel. So there's a lot of guns here. I had to stop that last clip of the Jebeli, or whatever they call it. Something like that. Because there was a guy, like, behind me with a gun, like, sticking out of his top. There's a much heavier emphasis on security here, and if you walk outside for more than 10 minutes, you will see probably for every minute you're walking, you will see somebody with some kind of weapon, whether it's like a security guard in a 7-Eleven or a, a police officer or a mall security guard or just someone standing outside a random shop. You'll see a lot of guns, big guns, small guns, pistols, shotguns, rifles. You'll see all sorts of guns. Lots of shops have a sign outside saying that you must not carry a weapon inside. So that implies that a lot of people might be carrying weapons if they were just out and about on the streets. So that's something you do not experience in Thailand, for example. The food here seems to be heavily influenced by American food. So you can get lots of burgers, pizza, uh, chicken and waffle, um, fried chicken, all that kind of thing. Of course, you get Asian food as well, like Vietnamese restaurants you'll see. You can get some fish and, and all sorts of um, cuisine. There really is, like in any capital city, you can get anything you want. But there's definitely more American food here than I've seen in places like Thailand, Vietnam. There's a more, more American influence, I guess, to do with the history of the country. English levels in the Philippines are very good, so it's very likely that everyone you meet will speak English, unless they're particularly uh, maybe a bit older or you know, less well educated, but certainly compared to Thailand and certainly China, you can expect a much higher level of English proficiency in the Philippines than you would in some other countries in this, in this part of the world. Philippines is the only country that I've seen who employ people to sit on a little stool in the corner of the elevator or lift and push the button. So you walk in, the first time I went to the mall, I walked in and there was a girl sat in the lift. She was just sat there in the elevator and I was kind of, I mean, I quickly realised she was wearing a uniform, she had a book with her. I quickly realised she had her hands on the button, so I quickly realised that she was there to push the button for me. but that didn't make me any less surprised that that was her job. So I found that quite kind of interesting. I just said, oh, floor four, please. And then I explained to her that I'd never seen anyone who, who, who had this job before. And she kind of smiled and that she was reading a book by Mitch Albom. I remember that. Tagalog language is quite easy to learn. You can say salamat po for thank you. If you want to get someone's attention, you can just say kuya which means like brother. You can say Kumusta, Kumusta, Pokoyo, means uh, like, hi, how are you, Kumusta ka. You can say Mabuti, I'm good, Mabuting. And it's, it's a nice language to learn. And I'd say if you're coming here, do pick up a few phrases. It's well worth it to kind of engage and interact and connect more with the local people here. I hope you enjoyed this video about Manila, the capital of the Philippines, a short insight into what it's like to go and spend a few days there. If you'd like to see more travel videos like this, then you can click here and you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I hope to see you back here again soon. Thanks for watching.